Linus is in the news again. Microsoft brings GVFS to Linux. Dell continues to embrace that penguin. And Nano releases an update. Hmm. It's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about just a few of the things that we found, would you say, interesting going on in the world of Linux? There's always something interesting, my friend. Oh, yeah. There's always something interesting, but uh, these are the most uh, prominent, pertinent, something that starts with a P and then listen, in listen, there you go, <laughs> right at the beginning of the show, making claims that like, we're competent in finding interesting stories. I didn't make that claim, ladies and gentlemen. So you can blame one Pedro Mateus joining us um, from Britannia, Hello. as he does every week. I'm here at LGC Actual Indeed. in Athens. And uh, what have you been up to, man? It's uh, been... A little cold, a little windy there on the island. Very windy today, but uh, over here I've actually, well, I spent most of the day yesterday uh, fawning over um, the Neverwinter Nights and Hass Edition because they fixed the multiplayer. So you can play with people again now without having to scour the internet for servers that are still up. So, hey, good news. Hey, man, I bet Strider's real happy about that. He's like, one less thing to let me taint. Mm. Yep. It's good. Um, I, I got a little care package with some audio stuff that showed up here. It's brilliant. No, Listen, no more super loud clicky stuff if I don't accidentally crush this gerbil, which is really small, even though it's the extra large one. Um, if I don't no, not everyone's got Ven hens. Well, um, we were talking about this before the show is, I was kind of wondering, you know, this is wireless. I didn't see, I'm guessing it's just Bluetooth, right? It, it's not Wi-Fi. Probably. Correct? Yeah. Just plugged it in. It picked up and worked with my G500S, which I'm, I'm not going to risk anything by touching it right now. But everything just worked out of the box. I did, you don't get two cursors, but I could just pick and choose between the two. I, I was a little... Yeah. When you've been using Linux as your daily driver since 1995, when things like that just plug in, no configuration, nothing. It's just like, all right, you know, where's the popcorn? It it, it kind of <laughs> spooks you out a little bit. Well, a little bit. It's, uh, well, it's input, so I kind of expect, I'm at that point where I sort of expect everything to work out of the box. It's just a more complex stuff, mm -hmm. like, say, a Steam controller. <laughs> <laughs> that that I was worried about when I first plugged it in. Well, the Steam controller has that nifty little feature of being able to nuke 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is you uh, want some interference? That's how you get some interference. Yeah, I I had to go 5G down here in the uh, basement studio of business. But Linus uh, kind of nuked a proposal earlier this week. Oh, yes. Yes, he did. So you may remember Linus's old motto of the kernel should never break user space. And he wasn't all too happy when, um, uh, what's his name? Keys Cook from the Google Pixel uh, development team submitted a security patch, which uh, is a little bit aggressive when it comes to um, nuking applications and bits of software that are running that are are acting in slightly less than normal ways and well linus had one of his old rants and he said that um what did he say security people are effing morons mm -hmm. uh so on and so forth uh so yeah and once again i feel inclined to agree with linus in this uh, specific situation because the, the way that the proposed patches would work is there's a whitelist of applications that don't get monitored uh, and everything else is subject to that monitoring and the moment something goes awry, it nukes it, just kills it right then and there. And that goes very much against what Linus said. The kernel should not break user space and let's face it, the developer, uh, Keys Cook, he did know that it was broken because he submitted another patch which introduced the fallback mode with uh, KVM and SCTP, that's IPv6, uh, to account for those two because he forgot those two uh, on the first time around. So yeah, Linus had a proper shout at him. 
Hey, as usual. Kind of, uh, well, uh, this is always fun. I, if you've been following Linux or uh, Linux development any time, you get a you get a Linus treat once or twice a year usually, mm-hmm. and uh, it's always great. You go make the popcorn. You sit down with the kids. You're like, let's read through this, and you get you got to think about it like this. You know, Linus views uh, any security issue as a bug. I mean, completely. Mm-hmm. He says, it's not acceptable, all caps. And when I'm Linus's age, I want to type in all caps, too. Uh, when people set magic, magical new rules and uh, makes the curl panic when those new rules are violated. And you know what, Pedro? I, I do believe he firmly has a point on that. Uh, taking the you know, kill it on site approach, you know, it works. But then you, like you said, you have to implement things like fallback modes because guess what, kids? Things going to go wrong. And uh, that's going to be a thing. Linus, uh, he's kind of more, he, what he's throwing down here is let's mark it, let's track it, let's see if it actually affects anything instead of breaking out the low orbit ion cannon and yeah. just blowing it away. And, and Cook did come back. He kind of backed down. He's like, all right. I think we he admitted maybe these fixes <laughs> couldn't be tested in just one development cycle. And Linus was good enough to come back. And he's like, whoop, jet lag. Okay, here's some things. Rationalized it, calmed down, you know, kind of toned it down a bit. And this is um, all this. He gave is him the funny. whole spiel. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it's well done, well explained. Don't break user space. And if you do. Yep. You're not going to have a good time. What do we got up next, man? Up next, we have a little bit more Linus. Uh, if you watch that uh, Saturday Foul Mouthed podcast, What We Do, you know about this. Uh, Dave Early submitted a couple of patches to help with the AMD Vega implementation in the kernel. And he was afraid uh, that Linus would say no because, well, let's be honest, uh, Linus has had a history of denying AMD patches in the past. So uh, he was, okay, this is what we did. It's still not perfect, but if you have any complaints, let me know. I'll fix them and we'll get it in on the next release cycle. Well, lo and behold, Linus had a look at it and said, nope, that's good. And he pulled all the patches in. So that's a big step up for AMD support on Linux with the new Vega cards. And it was surprising to see Linus not go, oh, this is more of that uh, hardware um, abstraction layer crap. So I'm not going to do it. But no, he did. And it's in. Well, that's it one is thing Linus totally really in. cares about. And then he's thrown down. He's All of your work, your fixes and all that. It's pointless if no one can actually use the product. So mm-hmm. you don't have a software project if people don't use it. And I, I think even yeah. he had to soften because what are, you, what are you doing? Wait on AMD, really? Um, <laughs> You're going to be sitting there a while. It could definitely be. It's good to see that because when this old, neglected, crusty, crippled 980, I know, I'm, I'm, I know some of you would trade children for a 980. I understand. <laughs> I am being a little facetious. Um, when it gives up the ghost and gets demoted to the rendering card for recording our mm-hmm. video, um, I would like a world where I could look at an AMD option. Like legitimately yeah, to everyone's get work right done. there with you. Yeah. So Yeah, there's a lot of people in the Linux community actually hoping for that day because let's face it, as good as the open source drivers have become when it comes to out of the box support to AMD GPUs, the performance is still atrocious when compared to NVIDIA. So having this uh brought into the kernel, okay, it's a little bit late on the Vega life cycle because hey, they're already out. But it's an improvement and people can actually start building off of this now and maybe even improve on it because, as Dave said, there is a to-do list accompanying these sets of patches, which, um, well, if anyone in the Linux community can even fathom what it is that is needed, by all means, go lend a hand, let them know how it goes. So good on him for letting that in and that's going to progress forward. We'll probably be seeing some stuff in 4.15, and mm-hmm. that's great. That genuinely makes me happy. Uh, this next story, mm-hmm. however, uh, genuinely makes me confused. <laughs> I, too, was confused when I ran into this. So Microsoft and GitHub team up to take Gertru- uh, the, yeah, virtualization. Gertru- no. 
<laughs> the Git virtual admit file it, system it, to it, macOS. Admit, and admit it, Pedro. Just having to read that headline hurts your brain and warps. And it's like, what moon yeah, future are we yeah. living in? <laughs> So you may remember that a while back, Microsoft said, you know what, this Git thing, it's a lot better than the system we have in place, so we're just going to start using it. And in true Microsoft fashion, they said, yeah, this is good, but we need a couple of more things. And one of those things was the the ability of handling a Git repository without having to download everything locally and running all the files locally, which not only takes up space, which comes at a premium if you're running a laptop with an SSD that's your development machine. Uh, it also uh, slows down access times because it's still doing that poking of the local files. Now, if you have crappy internet like I do, this is not going to do you any better because this is pulling all the files remotely. It's basically addressing those files and pulling everything it needs over the internet. This is more targeted at those um, companies that have big render farms with stupid, stupid bandwidth, and they can actually get a pretty decent speed if instead of downloading all the files locally, they could just poke them on the internet and work off of there. And this is what the uh, Git virtual file system does. That doesn't do anything for me specifically, especially when it comes to that article title, because I don't even know where to start there. Microsoft, Git, file system, Linux. Ah! <laughs> it's weird, man. Let, let's take the creator of Linux, uh, Linux's uh, code. Re <laughs> oh, just, yeah. It, ow. So... <laughs> I, <sighs> Is this progress, Pedro, or or because I Microsoft rightfully so has earned a staggering amount of distrust from basically anyone who's not Microsoft. Pretty much. And they kind of brought it on themselves, especially with the whole Windows 10 pushing itself on people like that. Yeah. yeah I, I I don't know. They they can't do anything to hurt get it's invulnerable because open source and uh yeah maybe this is just a play to get more of their enterprise customers and people using because you know azure spooling they have azure, to, yeah. yeah quite possibly so let me tell you about something i ran across um Ooh. it's called drive sync and i was kind of really excited because you can read here at the top google drive synchronization for linux and it's like g drive for linux because google won't make one and why mm -hmm. Google seriously it's 2000, <laughs> almost 2018 and this is just a CLI simple little tool that synchronizes your Google Drive uh, with a local folder on your machine and yeah it's our sync for Google Drive pretty easy to install I set it up played with it um, you know I don't know what is it uh drive sync will ignore any files over 512 megs that's the size i was looking mm -hmm. for and uh, so still, that would ignore all the gameplay videos i send over <laughs> exactly uh, we do have a use case for you know we use google docs for the show yep and it would be nice if we could have a shared drive mm -hmm. to put everything on but was like maybe Thunar integration or whatever flashy just a, a generic uh, file system integration would be nice and mm -hmm. actually let people say even if it they had to run chrome to do the editing to see like the simultaneous editing happen that's fine just have the file store locally so that say you go offline for a little bit and you do some changes and then you come back on and it just syncs everything up that would be nice it would be nice. And here's the problem. I, I love these projects, but this, you, you do, do a search on GitHub for Google Drive Linux. You're going to find a lot. So many. <laughs> and the problem with this, A, I didn't see anything in the software that would flag you if it couldn't phone home and get it synced. But mm -hmm. most importantly is not to be able to rely on it. Googs could have just changed something right then before I finished that sentence and now it's completely borked mm -hmm. and it never works again. And I I don't like risking that to moving targets. I pay 
some stupid little amount of money for whatever is like nine dollars or something a year for yeah, yeah a, a ton of storage space that I would use more, but maybe that's part of Google's clever plan for Linux users. We would actually put it to use. Uh, that clever plan is called uh, Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> that is their primary Linux demographic. It's Chrome OS. So well, Chrome OS probably works with it without issue. I don't, man. Mm. Yeah. Go check it out. <laughs> That'll be in the show notes. It's another attempt at it. I, I want to see Dragon... The only time I really want GUIs is when I'm dealing with our show notes and media and stuff. I, I want to just put that drive, our main drive that we use, mm -hmm. on the desktop, open it, open that document in Open Orifice or whatever, or Libre, and save it, and it gets synced. Done. No problem. Yep. Never think about it. Might not ever happen, but one can dream. So I had an adventure with Mailspring email <laughs> client because it's now available. Oh, check it out in hard mode too. It's a snap. Oh yeah, had to go, <laughs> had to go play with this. And because listen, listen, Th Thunderbird, I love you, but man, who I, I hope Thunderbird's it's next. It's starting in line. to show its age. It is yeah. getting rough. Uh, why use Mailspring? Eh, Thunderbird is a little clucky. I mean, it supports everything. If you're running IMAP, there's no big issues. And that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Because there absolutely are. Um, <laughs> here's what I did. I, I have um, I, I can't tell you my experience. But hear me out. I, I'm running 1710 mm -hmm. with a 414 kernel. Nothing. That's, that's really yep. the only modification outside of the just stock Ubuntu and okay snaps uh yeah it doesn't follow your system theme but I didn't have to worry about that because as soon as I got it installed as soon as I got it installed it said well you need to create a millspring account it's like oh no I don't bye um <laughs> that that was step one couldn't get past that screen there was no skip creating <laughs> A account for a company that yeah uh, yeah I was not doing that so part two of this gnome software it's a bit rubbish I don't know who to blame you know when I tried to install it I, I did a search for Mailspring it showed up it said hey I'm a snap it's like cool man I want to give all this technology I don't care if it's a flat pack snap app it I don't care snap mm -hmm. let's have a go with this and hit install and complained about not being able to do something with Snap. I don't know a lot about Snap. It was like, oh, well, we gave it a try. A little later, probably 30 minutes. It's like, hmm, I wonder what that really did. I was just looking through my menu on XFCE. It's like, oh, it's installed? What? Launched? That, that's when I saw the menu to, let's create an account. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. let's not. It had actually installed on my system, Pedro, but it didn't register. So I couldn't uninstall from GNOME Software Center. Still had the so, install. That tells me that the snap bit worked as intended. It was the gnome side of things that said, uh, nope, mm, no, can't see it installed, don't know what to do with it, error. And it wouldn't surprise me because I hate gnome. <laughs> so it was a quick trip off to command line. Well, first it was a trick uh, trip to Google how, how to remove snaps mm -hmm. from command line. <laughs> it, it was easy enough. I mean, no harm, no foul. But don't know, don't know where to place the blame on that one. Not that it's yeah. The the only complaint, I, I guess, back to the original point is uh, don't, don't make me sign up for an account to test your um, anything. <laughs> Unless it's like... I didn't even get that far. I looked at the news story and I thought to myself, oh, am I really tired of looking at my email through an old version of Firefox with a funky layout? Well, I guess now I could look at my email through an old version of Chromium with a funky layout. So uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Quite possibly. <laughs> um, hey, man, things that should never change is uh, Dell giving um linux big old sloppy penguin kisses all oh, the penguins because they've been doing it for a long time this is nothing new uh this comes from beta news mm -hmm. and dell's launched five new computers with linux 
pre-installed and know that these aren't these low tier. This is like, whoop, yep, that's $1,000 bucks. 1500 for the base model, actually. Ooh, and <laughs> yeah, the precision AIO and then the precision laptops, which that one looks a lot like an XPS, but it's not. Uh, and the others are the more um, professional looking ones. That's the the ones that have the crappy design. We have a lot of those at work. <laughs> Pretty happy with them, especially with. Um, yep. If you're going from Dell, you, you get two options or you roll your own home. You can get rel on them, or they're also shipping with 1604 LTS. Yep. Both very good um, options. Uh, I will say from the author of this from PETA News, it's, like it's very important to ensure compatibility that you purchase a system with Linux pre-installed. It's, like it's 2017. No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry. You, you had an argument like, 2004 when it what was the site Linux for laptops or the compatibility site yeah. i remember going to that every time i bought a laptop and like sometimes you would get work like working wi-fi if you, I, I had bought mm-hmm. laptops mm-hmm. off based that this yeah i don't know i mean with the all-in-one stuff they look neat and they are reasonably priced too mm, mm-hmm. The only downside I found, and feel free to send a, you, you can send us that hate mail because uh, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're just big shills, but this is something you need to keep uh, in mind is they are all powered by AMD graphics. Yep. They the integrated the graphics. Radeon WX Pro. Yeah. So you can either pick just the Intel integrated or the Radeon WX Pros, uh, which, well, crappy performance for crappy performance might as well go for the cheaper option mm. but no that aio that all-in-one looks amazing i would love one of those just to put it on a living room like right in the middle of the table it's like there you go computer <laughs> i hmm. yeah see yeah yeah <laughs> I get away with it. Um, integrated graphics, all in ones. All in ones do scare me just a bit, but that's just from fixing. Yeah, you're not going to be cracking them open. Yeah. You're no, not going no, to be you see, Pedro, this is where you're wrong. We're exactly the people who would be cracking them open. <laughs> yes, we would, but they're not uh, made for that specific purpose. That's for people who want a desktop that they don't want to crack open. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Cool. Good on Dell. They've been loving the Linux for a long, long time, and it's an option Indeed. to install. And they don't get a lot. Of, I mean, they don't get any hate. But you know, first people like System seventy six or um, Entroware or uh, Tuxedo Purism. I think Purism. Yes, yeah. uh, with the Librem laptops. Oh, all good companies. A lot of people forget about Dell. Dell's been making computers for a long time, so. Oh, yeah. Definitely a thing. Okay, new things. Not necessarily Linux-related, but we needed to give it a mention, and that's Quad9, DNS server. Uh, You can set it 9999, extra evil when it does handstands, guaranteed. (laughs) And this is supposed to be a new thing. You know, I plug those digits into the main router, and I guess it works. Mm -hmm. Can't say I absolutely have seen any immediate advantages, but look, why are you doing this? Well, GCA and IBM have partnered with Packet Clearinghouse to launch basically this DNS, and it supposedly blocks all malware from phoning home, mm-hmm. at least malware that they know about. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is GCA is a nonprofit, so long term growth of the service kind of going to be dependent on government and industry continuing to fund it. That said, Mm -hmm. good idea, or do you black helicopter immediately when it's like, yeah, the government also funds us a little bit? (laughs) Yeah, if the government's involved, chances are that there's something possibly shady going on in the background. But I like the idea of actually blocking known malware urls from resolving Mm -hmm. so even if you are say on android and you get one of you happen to land on one of those websites that doesn't curate its ads so you end up getting redirected to a malware website this is going to stop that this is just not going to let your phone resolve that url 
So that is good, especially if you have less than technical people in your household. So, well, even yeah, on Android, I, I think you got to be fair. Even on it, you don't normally think about stuff like that. And that's a very good use yeah. case for at least your Wi-Fi router. First mm -hmm. world, yeah. The the one you you know, um, and have something like this installed. I, <laughs> I haven't removed it. I have this as set as the primary and um, something else, like level three for secondary. Then I have the Googs on part three. Mm -hmm. it's, a, yeah, it's not a bad thing, I don't think. But yeah, I guess salt to taste. My, I don't think it could hurt anything. But, you know, if this DNS has actually made disparaging remarks about your mother, let us know. <laughs> why we should be afraid yeah. and not like it and speak unkindly about it. So um, here's the program that a lot of us are familiar with, especially from back in the day. Uh, you, you get familiar with these things like Pico and a lot of people mm -hmm. learned to use Midnight Commander, Vim and all that. Why? Because they had borked their X session. <laughs> you oh, were yeah. stuck in TTY. <laughs> uh, but program i still and use this to this was, day man yeah go ahead yeah this one was basically called thank god it's not vim <laughs> <laughs> at least by me because i was one of those people that could never wrap my head around uh the vim keyboard interface so nano was simple it was descriptive it showed all of the commands down at the bottom and it was easy enough to use so that's what i started using whenever i bought my x session and they've put out an update. They've been out, uh, putting out uh, some updates every now and then. They were very prolific last year, but I guess it was stable enough up until now uh, that they didn't really need to update it through most of um, the past couple of months. So in November, uh, on the 18th, they pushed out the ETA update. That's 2.9.0. And what does it do? Well, it does macros. That that's basically it. It's got a couple of more keyboard shortcuts. They actually have Control S to save now without wait having a minute, to wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, the, is that robot trying to do something more than pass the butter? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's uh, stepping into um, LibreOffice Writer and LibreOffice spreadsheet territory with all the macros and everything. Mm. So if you were expecting, say, some improvement to the syntax highlighting in Nano, uh, or maybe even letting you cycle through all the different languages that it can do syntax highlighting for, nope, mm -mm, nope, you're not getting any of that. You're getting macros and control S to save, basically. I, I still crack it open when I'm in trouble. Full disclosure, ever since G-Edit, and it has been a long time ago, got off my lawn and started doing syntax highlighting. I, I, I'm such a G-Edit slut. I, I, I'll be I'll be in a virtual terminal and open G-Edit from the terminal just to edit something. It, it's horrible. I'm ashamed of myself. And um, th them's the facts. It's good. Nano, I love it. I used Pico back in the day. That mm -hmm. was the first one of, I need a text editor. What was uh, in DOS? Edit, wasn't it? Yep, just edit. Just edit. <laughs> that, that, that was the thing when you got done playing Gorillas. No, not that one. Mm -hmm. The other one. Okay, before we get... Oh, we got a couple more things we need to talk about. Indeed. Um, Windows 10 alternative. Microsoft should embrace... Extend... Extend uh, and extinguish? Yeah. <laughs> Coming from ZDNet, <laughs> I get it. The PC is too expensive to replace, and you don't want Windows 10. Suggesting another solution. Really, I went through this article. We're just going to go through this real quick. Because the author is like, hey, man, build a glorified Chromebook. That's Linux, but do it with a desktop computer because that's an egregious waste of hardware and power. Uh, that said, Microsoft is slowly Titanic Glacier Pace pivoting into a services company. They are. They're even taking steps to make Windows a subscription service with Windows 10. Mm -hmm. Something like nine quid or something like that a month. Um, I don't see them ever using Linux to deliver it on the user end. On the back end, it's going to get there. Absolutely. That, that's already started mm -hmm. off. But I also, I, I think this article is scared me a little bit because it makes it seem like, oh, no, no, no. You just put the Linux on. You got Chrome. 
I, I get what he's thinking, because most people don't really... Uh, we're not talking about me, you, or anyone listening to this show. We're not. No. A lot of people just know how to use the browser. That, that's it. Or the app, the equivalent. And I could understand mm-hmm. getting somebody on LinkedIn, because th- they don't care. But do you think that's a good thing, to just have that level of uh, abstraction to where they, they would have no idea? It's not a good thing, but it's not a bad thing either. It really depends on the the person that you're dealing with and what kind of work environment they have uh, that could or could not justify that uh, obfuscation of what the operating system really is. Well, the, one and, of the things yeah, he was talking about was Remix OS, you know, and let's bring Android yes. to the desktop and that went... Yeah, that didn't work so well. But then again, they had a weird distribution model. But yeah, I'm guessing they'll learn and they'll come back with something at at a later point. But it really depends because most people, I'll be honest, I did a lot of IT support for my grandmother. She's 80. Uh, She knows the basic of how to turn on the computer, uh, put in her password when it asks for it, and just finding the Firefox icon or the Chrome icon uh, the word icon uh, or the XL icon, and that's it. That's all she uses it for. So if you could get uh, LibreOffice or even uh, Office, uh, the web version of uh, Office 365 as a desktop shortcut and say, you go here and you go here to do this and you go there to do that, that would be a good thing for you because you know exactly what is running in the back and you're the one providing IT support so it would work for you. Let's say they run into a problem and you're not available and they go ask someone else. That's when the problems start because that other person is going to go there and say, this isn't Windows. This isn't... What are you running? (laughs) Hey, man. True story. This is back in the day. We were probably talking like 2002, 2003. I had to install Windows in a VM for the cable guy to install my modem. He wouldn't do it on Linux. He he had to say he did something and do it with his software. He's like, I mm-hmm. gotta have Windows. So I was like, give me a minute. And <laughs> well, that's kind of one of the problems. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. If you want to run Linux, uh, Linux is definitely going to be seeing more adoption when it becomes mainstream. I used to say, when they sell Linux at Walmart, it'll be, then they tried it and it failed horribly. So Mm -hmm. there's also that. Before we get out of here, I wanted to give this a quick mention because uh, Qubit Torrent, you know it, you might download your Linux ISOs with it. Mm -hmm. A little off topic, but all right. Legitimate update. They just had a very recent update today, but on the 20th, they did add a cute little thing to do the custom tray icons. Uh, when the system icon theme is used. That's neat. That mm-hmm. is like, all right, and this is just a massive change. But what I saw, what I saw, not Linux related, <laughs> but some of you might appreciate this as much as I did. <laughs> they did in, not the very latest, I mean, latest as a Monday, but for not not, yeah. they dropped support for OS 2. <laughs> were you one of the three people still actively using os2 i'm sorry why would you do that to yourself <laughs> it boggles the mind huge all right not as much as ryan c gordon he will out fanboy me on os2 any day huge fan of mm-hmm. os2 and what are you downloading on os2 I, I, I don't... Linux ISOs. <laughs> your ISOs, well, you better be. You... That, that, that's the thing, man. I, I just wanted to mention that. I thought it was fun. I thought it was neat. And um, it, they also added the system tray. I had to dig around for that. I was like, haha, see, Linux thing. Mm-hmm. By the way, they dropped support for OS too. Can you believe that? I, good, good on them. Good on them for having that in there for that long. Um, yeah. But, but since we're talking about um, downloading Linux ISOs, we might as well give this a mention because this does affect, not directly, but indirectly, Cody. And um, mm-hmm. that's probably one of the most, uh, not most, but uh, 
very, very popular uh, piece of software yeah. that is available on Linux. Previously hmm. known as XBMC, uh, you may know it because you probably use it to watch stuff you probably shouldn't be watching or you're not legally authorized to. And that's what uh, Netflix, Amazon, and a few others, uh, mostly big studios, big Hollywood studios, uh, part of the um, Motion Picture Association, uh, they sent a bunch of cease and desist letters to a couple of add-on developers. This wasn't directly to the Cody developers. They're actually targeting the add-on developers. And they found their personal addresses and they sent them actual physical letters. That right there kind of puts you in check. You just go, oh, they know where I live. Right. So a lot of developers were hit and a lot of developers uh, over the past couple of days have been taking to Twitter and saying, look, we're shutting down. Uh, I don't want to get sued for millions of dollars. I, any sane person wouldn't. So they are shutting down, and most of the known repos like J. Sergio, Colossus, and a few others have also shut down. And uh, the Eris Wizard was the latest one to also just outright poof as a result of this. So keep that in mind. Uh, I can't say I blame them. The industry is just doing the scare tactics. They've been going at first. They mm -hmm. went after individuals way back when yeah. Napster. Remember that hashtag Metallic Ops. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that was the thing. Then they went after people who were pirating movies and suing them. Into, now then they went after ISPs, ISP. And I understand that these add-on developers are like, yeah, all right, I'm out. Because you're making something you really shouldn't have been making in the first place. But then there's mm -hmm. also the argument of, listen, I'm not telling these people to commit piracy with this program. Yeah. I'm just saying it's... I'm just facilitating it. <laughs> it. Which kind of led me around to this thought. Is it, it seems like the industry as a whole, be it RIAA, MPAA, or anyone along... They will tolerate, like, to an incredible amount, uh, programs used for piracy, just like a, the BitTorrent client, mm -hmm. QBitTorrent we were just talking about. You don't see them going yep. after torrent clients, and I got a theory about that, Pedro, as to why. Okay. You ever tried to talk somebody who knew nothing about torrents, talk them through, let's say over the phone, how to download a Linux I had ISO. That I had that thought uh, a couple of times, and then I said, is there a direct link? That'll be easier. <laughs> this, this, I have done this, and it did involve me saying, F it, getting in the car and driving for 45 minutes. <laughs> that, and, and there's a point to this, stick with me, is... If it's that difficult to use, or like, and not not enough people, it's not it's not a big uh, enough enough surface area for us to worry about. So you look at things that love it or hate it, uh, tools that a lot of people use to organize their content. Let's just say that, mm -hmm. like Plex, not not the easiest thing to get up and running. I know it's really easy to get up and running, but I'm just saying. So go go install Plex and give them a computer and uh, it might take a minute. Those They'll you, look at you like a deer in the headlights. The problem with Cody is people are selling these preloaded boxes. It is wicked easy to use and they got a problem with that. So that just paints a big yeah. target on it. And I understand where they come from. People pay for your content. And that's how shows get made. Yep. Unless you can't get it, then all right. Then you then you get a little yeah. Sympathy. If you can't legally acquire or watch a show or play a game in the country you live in because of some stupid backwards regulation, yeah, piracy is not only acceptable. I'd say it's justified at that point. Well, I mean, coming from Portugal, where it's effectively legal, <laughs> too late. If you share that. That's when you're being a distributor and that's where you get in trouble. But if you're just downloading, well, you are paying a tax on every All single storage uh, media, data storage yeah. device. Yep. Yeah. I don't know, man. Crazy times, but um, support what you like, support what you love. And maybe if you dig our um, crazy little song and dance, 
what we do here every Wednesday. You can head over to LinuxGameCast.com, slam that support button. Wait, what did the kids say? Smash that support button, fam, or something. <laughs> I don't know. Get woke. Hashtag YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> old man ben hey man get off my lawn kids how are you fellow kids we got some amazon affiliate links they're in there britannia america canadia and uh france i even put that in there we got a new egg affiliate link amazon wish list we got a bunch of uh bits and bobs on there if you want to help us do cheat mode right now because our studio is currently in a state of flux and that would be greatly appreciated plus it's the holidays even though we don't celebrate them um bitcoin that's also a thing if uh because this bitcoin thing completely tanked last week so get rid of them while you oh, can oh yeah absolutely the yeah. bubble pop didn't you hear yep uh, <laughs> they're, 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 they're practically <laughs> worthless um not 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 worth the uh energy it takes to set them up i do get a bit of news though i do get a bit of news you did yeah just yeah. Just, just a little bit it kind of came out of nowhere is uh first of all thank you everyone who's supporting this. I mean, we are, mm -hmm. you, you've allowed us to do more than any, just the fact that we're doing this at this capacity at this level. It's like, well, what's yep. going on? We keep waiting for the joke to end because we assume this is being recorded for someone's entertainment. Uh, I, I had to do the update for Linux Gamecast weekly. I had to update something on um, the RSS feed for iTunes. Mm -hmm. And I had to log in. iTunes. iTunes. Mm -hmm. iTunes. Uh, I'm getting to something, man. <laughs> Which is like why I'm in here, because this is a hard thing. I got to get that x86 Windows tablet because I refuse to have something physically attached in this house with Windows on it. And it's difficult. Fortunately, it, I can plug a gerbil into it and use it on like this little nine inch screen. And that's hard to keep sorted while you have a loaded gun trained to it in case it tries to escape. I mean, this is a very complex mm -hmm. procedure. You don't want it escaping, getting into your house anywhere and touching anything. I went ahead and submitted this show, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, and I was like, meh, whatevs, it'll get rejected, don't care. Before we finished that episode of Meet the Freemans, which we do on Tuesdays, come join us. This is where we're going to mm -hmm. curb check Half-Life 2. Uh, Linux Nero, uh, Vetundai, Romlock, Romlock, and Tuxer. <laughs> all joined in. Come join us. Check us out on the schedule. It'll be up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just sent off a... It's like, okay, try it, whatever. Two hours later, boom, they're like, here, there you go. So if you're stuck with an <laughs> iDevice and you don't want to uh, have to, I don't even know if they allow duplication for podcasting software, we are on iTunes. It's a thing. Blow it up. Um, like and subscribe. I don't know. I don't use iTunes, but it's there for <laughs> your viewing enjoyment. All right, let's see. Nope, we All got right. to do... Uh, do we ah, no, we have a uh, we do have an executive producer, a new executive producer to uh, thank this week, mm -hmm. uh, Bar Bramt. I'm assuming that's how you spell it. Uh, Bar Bramt uh, kicked us a few shackles on Patreons at the executive producer level. Thank you very much. And if you are on Patreon, please, please remember there's 106 of you giving us $212 to one two. Uh, but if you are there and you say you like to join in for the other six days of the week or five days of the week, as the case may be, um, join us in our Discord. Uh, if you're a Patreon, you have a little link that you need to click to sync your Patreon account to your Discord account, which will give you access to all of the neat stuff that our Patreons get on our Discord server. So get on it. There's well, a link in the show notes. Hey, Amen. That is... <laughs> something we want to make did you put a link uh go ahead and drop a link in chat for that yeah because we're gonna kick that on we didn't want to mess around with the uh patron bot until all the bugs and everything were hammered out and mm -hmm. it's been floating around for like three or four months so we're gonna flip the switch on that at the end of the month the only thing you'll notice i mean if you don't care about discord don't worry about it it will not affect you in any way yep. shape form you can always go back retroactively and do it but before we added the bot a few months back so if your name's in red uh, something Ted. I can't rhyme with that. Just, just, just link up with the stupid <laughs> bot, and uh, everyone will be kosher. Uh, slice of pie. I found something new this week. Not the pie itself, Ooh. but a pie cutter, and that looks horribly inefficient. Is all that looks. <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of redundant. You have two blades. No, just put a big blade on the top of the pie. That, that, that 
uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what we're here for. We're here about interesting and neat Raspberry Pi projects. And if you had a dream Dreamcast back in the day, well, this one's for you. This is the VMU Pi. Oh, yeah. If you still have a VMU kicking around and the outside shell is actually in pretty good shape, well, uh, uh, Kite, that's his name, uh, he makes uh, custom PCBs for the Raspberry Pi. And, well, he was working on his latest project with the Compute Module 3, and he wanted to see if he could actually, you know, shove everything he needed to make a full-blown games console inside a VMU. Yes, there's some fingers for perspective right there. Ah, it is just a VMU, and uh, his custom PCB is the black PCB that you see in the pictures down below. Uh, and it, he's actually using a Raspberry Pi Zero W because, you know, Wi-Fi, obviously. There's a battery, uh, and it it works. He basically stripped the Pi Zero for all of its IOs and just uh, plugged it into his custom PCB with its own IOs, which it works and it works reasonably well. The screen is a bit crap. Uh, that's one of the complaints that he had uh, saying that, yeah, he wishes he could have a better screen, but that is the best one that he could f uh, he had one at first that was just terrible you can see it in the video uh then he got a slightly better one but it's still pretty bad and he really wants a better um screen to put in the td tiny vmu but th this was really neat i was looking at this and i'm like oh yeah i'd wish i'd had a dreamcast back in the day just so i could you know actually attempt to put this together yeah this uh, is nice. uh, man i don't because as soon as i see surface mount resistors anything along that mm -hmm. sort of like ptsd like nope nope mm, get it away <laughs> that that's bad that that's fun that'd be fun to play around with but mm -hmm. it's a cool project not for me it's uh i, I think uh, something more my speed would be this and that's the magic key three in one i was going to say diy because that's a good subreddit by the way not DIY, mm -hmm. DIY, uh, MIDI gamepad slash keyboard. Yeah, that that's uh, absolutely a real thing. And uh, it's just neat. I mean, you basically hook it up to any Pi Power, you get that. But the what really, mm -hmm. come on, I'm still learning to use this little gerbil, is you can hook it up to the MIDI interface and you can turn anything into a musical instrument, basically. And uh, I can think of a <laughs> gang of things to hook this musical, we'll hook the musical bits up to. Uh, unfortunately most of them highly inappropriate and we can't talk about them on this show but look at that look at that look at that you can make your own fight stick with a cardboard box i mean come on why not i mean th this is a true like play around have some fun toy what is it currently 32.99 we're not affiliated with mm -hmm. whoever who's selling geeky gadgets this just happened to be where yep. i could see the kit and you can play with it. Uh, I have you ever built a controller? Uh, no, I've taken a few apart and put them back together, but I've never built one from scratch. I was going to say, I mean, I think we've all torn apart like NES controllers or Genesis yeah. controllers and took the eraser to them. The Saturn and controllers. Them. <laughs> yep. That was always a thing, but I've never put one together. That, that's absolutely for sure. That's yeah. a really cool project. Um, but then again, with with it's Raspberry Run Linux, man, you can use any controller you want. You can do anything. Any controller you want, <laughs> if you're brave enough. We should put that disclaimer yep. on there. All right, <laughs> that's gonna do us. We're gonna get out of here, but before we do, Indeed. we like to give you a chance to talk back to us. Tell the beautiful people where they can do that. You can do that very easily. Uh, just go to LinuxGameCast.com. There's a little contact button that you'll see on the little nav bar at the top. Click that. You'll get a form. Make sure to pick LWDW from the little drop down thing. It's pretty easy. Leave us your message. Uh, anything. If we got anything wrong, if we said anything inaccurate, plenty of those. Uh, if you'd like to say disparaging remarks about our mothers, you probably want to pick a Linux Gamecast Weekly or LGC Weekly on the little drop down thing. Uh, but anything else, some feedback, some love mail, some even relationship advice for Jordan. Uh, he will get back to you the moment we have him on camera because we hate him that much. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, <laughs> coming up first, uh, Matt, why do I always get the names? Candle... Candle Algebra. Uh, all right, what he said. It says compi- Candle Algebra. <laughs> Listen, man, you quit making up words, Pedro. It's un- unbecoming. <laughs> uh, he says, Vin, whoever that is, because that, that's spelled wrong. Mm-hmm. Vin said last week he was running Colonel 414 on Kaboom 21710. Is this possible to do without having to compile anything? Question mark. Interested in trying? Uh, yeah, man. You what is yes. it? The mainline repository. Yep. I you don't... can either set up the mainline repository and get the kernel updates automatically, mm-hmm. or you just download the image, the headers all, and the headers for the specific kernel you picked. If you pick the low latency one, make sure to pick the low latency uh-huh. headers. If you pick the generic one, pick the generic uh, headers. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, I, too, did that. Uh, I am currently running kernel 414 on 1604. So, yeah, no, it absolutely does work uh, without having to compile anything. Mostly because I couldn't compile the Zen kernel with the BrainFuck scheduler on 16.04. Now, if you, yeah, once you do that, just throw that whole gang in one directory, dpackage i, and you'll get, mm-hmm. it'll get you sorted. But uh, if you're looking for a GUI solution, I had to, because I installed it, and it's like, how backwards is this? I was getting, wanted to make some fun of it. It's called Uku kernel update utility mm-hmm. it's a thing i tried it as like, oh all right that actually worked i don't use it it's not my dice I, I like doing things the hard way if you haven't figured that out so um no issues there and you're not really going to break your box it's something if you need a linux yeah don't 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 uninstall any kernels is what i'm telling you yeah don't uninstall your currently running kernel that's that's when things break uh, <laughs> well, I, I like to have one or two laying around is kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. So let's see. What, what we got one more. Up next. We? Indeed, we have Albus. And he asks, what is the state of Ryzen on Linux? Is there any recommended distro? Any showstoppers? Driver problems? Uh, well, let's see. Let's go. First question. State of Ryzen on Linux. I'm running Ryzen. Ven's running uh, Ryzen. So... Yeah, I'd say it's perfectly serviceable. Uh, is there any recommended distro? Basically, anything that comes preloaded with the 4.10 or higher kernel, uh, you're probably looking at 4.12 or 4.11. Um, those will give you the best possible support. But outside of that, pick whichever distro you fancy. Any showstoppers? Uh, well, sensors can still be hit or miss. But for the most part, uh, chipsets will actually give you at least a basic readout of the temperature and the fan speeds. For the most part. Basically, you're going to have enough to know whether or not it's literally on fire. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Before the smoke starts coming out of the case, that is. Clonkia picked us up the um, MSI Tomahawk B350. And at first, I had to do a custom. I did a how-to video on that. A lot of good that did me. But now, mm-hmm. the sensors for the B350, well done. I mean, you get voltage. What I need, I need voltage and I need CPU tip. That's the only, and fan speeds, which I don't really need. It's just there. Yeah. Um, showstoppers. Uh, no, I mean, outside of testing it and seeing if you get a bad one. Oh, yeah. If you get one of the early production ones, you may have the rise and kill bug. Uh, it, it, so... Listen, it, it could be if you're patient, if really patient, eventually GCC is going to get updated to the point where that's not going to be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to be really patient. And though. driver problems. Uh, no, no real driver problems. Uh, let's see. What could. Hmm. No. Mm-mm. I mean, outside of actually having proper uh, chipset support to support all of the sensors, that's really the only problem with the drivers and the firmware not getting along too well right now. But that's it. It yeah. doesn't stop. It doesn't really stop anything. It doesn't really give you reduced functionality. It's just, it would be nice to have slightly better support for that. But that will come in time, I have no doubts. Well, this is absolutely true. And it's really calmed down. Like, I, I kind of caught, like, the tail end when I got my Ryzen 7. Things were still a mm-hmm. bit chaotic, but, I mean, they were definitely on the downslope. And you makes you feel like a kid again because I'm actively checking MSI's web zone to see, oh, is there a new beta? 
BIOS that I can download? New BIOS! Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> then we're then you get to play the fun game. See, all right, there are some issues. Memory is going to be an expletive deleted. No, oh hitter. yeah, memory. But memory, it's actually the fault of the memory manufacturers right now. Besides being stupidly expensive, it will be stupidly uh, is that they expensive. claim it'll hit a certain. Well, they they say it will hit it on Intel. They don't say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't really blame them, but yeah, hitting 3000 can be tricky and hitting 3000 um, guarantee- unless you buy, <laughs> let me finish this sentence, man. Check this out. Let me, okay. let me see if I, let me see if I'm going to address your point. Hitting 3000 or above reliably with a known particular brand, that brand is going to be in shorter supply than everything else. Therefore, more expensive than everything else. Yeah, and make sure uh, one thing you really want to do with Ryzen, have a look at the QVL list. Asus has one, MSI has one, Gigabyte has one, ASRock has one. Mm -hmm. Have a look at the QVL list and see what the speeds each and every single kit of RAM is uh, confirmed to hit on that particular motherboard. I had a look at mine, and that's why I bought the stupid 3600 megahertz um, a DDR4 16 gigabytes from Corsair, I think, that came with that stupid heatsink. Uh, and yes, it will hit 3600 in the BIOS because the moment you get to the operating system, it only sees 3200 megahertz. But hey, it's 3200 megahertz. It's, it's 3200. Still yeah, I, I had to talk myself down because the Corsair Vengeance, whatever. It, uh, yeah, it, it's rated Vengeance at, LPX. That's LPX. It's rated at three grand and. It's like best I can do is twenty nine thirty three. Like, oh, oh, really? You're gonna do that? Too? I, it, it wouldn't have bothered me as much if it was like twenty eight hundred. I'm like, yeah, all right, but twenty nine is just, just dangling it right there. It's right there, it, right there. It, it, it's basically saying if you want to go mess around with cast latency timings, you could probably get this. It's like, no, I don't have that kind of time. Why you got to be like that, man? Um, but you're normally going to be hitting, you know, 2800 with 16 gigs, 32 gigs. You don't look so forward to, you know, clocking three grand on your memory. And we're not talking night and day difference. Okay. It's a bit over exaggerated when you see the difference between it like reduces the latency between the a certain it's process infinity, that's infinity fabric cores. Yeah. Yeah. But we're yeah. not talking massive, massive differences here. People make like, Oh yeah. yeah if you get, if you can hit uh 2800, 3000 computers broken. Might as well just set it on fire, get rid of it. And that, that's not necessarily true. So, no. uh, Hey man, I had fun this day. Did you have any fun, Pedro? Indeed. And oh yes, absolutely. Hope everyone who joined us live also had a little bit of fun. Hopefully we didn't mess up and actually educate anyone. We we try to avoid that because we don't want to re be responsible. Um, that'd be terrifying. And no, thanks again to no. all of our patrons. <laughs> and you guys, everyone in Discord joining us live and IRC. We will see you next week because right now it's time for the credits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, all y'all people who give us a uh, teeny tiny bit of your money and... They well, fund this we're nightmare putting it fuel. Use. Indeed. Uh, Ven is basically just... Uh, <laughs> Ven's been turned into a work He's going monkey. crazy a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> going a little bit crazy, putting the studio together with we, everything. We, we should call but it the LGC Test awesome. Labs. Thanks to you lot. We, we can make a lot of money if I just put a drop cam in here and make church 50 bucks <laughs> for access to it. It's like, this is how we do it. There? You watched it? You, did you see it? No? Okay, well, too late now. <laughs>